Hi, we're Ariel. And Michelle. And, and we're, we're the, the Board, board Game, Game Tutors. Tutors. Today, we're going to be doing our first advanced concepts video. Where we'll be going over how buildings work and also how to build the different borders in the board game Agricola, All Creatures Big and Small. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first we're going to talk about the different buildings. And here you can see the cottage. This is already on your player board when the game starts. You can see it doesn't give you any victory points. Right there is where it shows victory points. It says zero here. And that makes sense because everyone has one at the beginning. You don't do anything to get it. And then in the bottom right corner, it tells the number of animals that can live there, and that's one. So some people describe this as having like some sort of house pet, but there, you can see in the picture there's actually like an enclosure for an animal to live in. So I think that's where the animal goes. Yeah, your animal doesn't live in your house with you. That's just unsanitary. <laughs> <laughs> and also there are four walls, as you can see, around this building. So there are walls here and here for your purposes, and also for here if you build out to the left. Yeah, so you get to already have a wall there. You don't have to build another one um, in order to have an enclosure that's enclosed on that side. So for example, if you were going to build an enclosure uh, in this square, you'd only have to put one, two, three borders in order to make that a full enclosure because this one's a free one. Right, right. All right. Okay. That's so then we have the stalls. The stall is I think the cheapest one, I'm not sure it's the cheapest one to get, but it's one of the basic buildings that you might get. Mm -hmm. So you can see at the top what the cost is. Since you don't start out this one, you do it with this one, you do have to pay for it. And so the symbols show you at the top, you need three stone and one reed in order to build this stall. Right. And then it gives you one victory point once you have it. So that will count toward your points at the end of the game. And in the bottom right corner, it shows that it can hold up to three animals. And there are four copies of stalls in the game. Uh, fun little fact, if you zoom out a little bit, all of these stalls here, they all have different artwork on them. Even though they're all identical, they all cost the same amount of resources. They all get the same amount of re um, uh, victory points at the end of the game, one. Um, they all have unique art. So you're customizing your own little personalized uh, farm. I was going to say factory farm, but it's not <laughs> necessarily a factory farm. but More of a family farm. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, how it might turn into a factory farm when we flip this over. Right. So. And also going back to stables really quick. Um, there's a spot on the board and that's where you go if you want to build a, a stall. stall sorry, if you want to build a stall. So you right put here. your worker on that spot. And so. it shows the cost right there, three stone and one reed. And you can only build one stall. It's not unlimited. Yeah, each time you go there, you can build one. And obviously okay. you would have to spend the resources like Michelle said. Okay, so then the stall can become a stable once you have it. So you pay separately for the stable, but you have to already have a stall token, which you would then flip over, and it would become a stable. So all of these stalls, when you flip them over, they say stables on the other side. Mm -hmm. And the cost right here, as you can see, is... Either five wood or five stone. So that slash in the middle means or. Mm -hmm. And you can't use a combination. Right, so you either do all wood or all stone in order to make the stable. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you four victory points. And that means that would replace the single victory point that you had when it was a stall. Because once you flip it over, the stall is gone and it's now just a stable. Yeah, so stalls normally give you one victory point. But when you flip it over, you get a stable. And that gives you four victory points instead. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom right corner, you see that it can hold five animals in the stable. Mm -hmm. Right, so those are stables. So... Uh, another, uh, like it says here, this little symbol just means you have to have a stall before you can build a stable. And obviously you just flip it over on your board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and any are... animals that were already in the stall would now be in the stable once you flipped it yeah, over. They don't get smashed when you flip the building over. <laughs> um, they just have a new home. And all... that also goes for... Um... All buildings. Yeah. What do you call those other the things? Um, feeding troughs. Yeah. So yeah, if you had a feeding trough in there in the stall, it would still be in the stable. And we'll go over that when we get to feeding troughs in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we have the special buildings. So there are four different special buildings that you can get. There's only one copy of each of these in the game. And in order to build a special building, there's a spot on the board for that. There are actually two special building spots. I think that's the only thing that there are two copies of on the board. Here and here. So you can take your one worker and place it on the first one or the second one, doesn't matter which one you cover. And then if uh, Michelle wanted to, she could build a special building on this spot here using her blue worker. Or if I wanted to, I could do that when it, come, when it came back around to my turn again. So 
I just have to have the resources to do so, which is kind of hard to manage in the game because resources are at a premium. Right. So okay. So here, for. so here we're going to look at the storage building, one of the special buildings you can buy. It costs two wood and one reed. And this one is unique because the victory points are going to be based on how much building material you have left over at the end of the game. So you can see the asterisk in that circle where the victory points go. So it's undetermined until you get to the end of the game. So this shows you get half a victory point per your own building material. So like one example would be if we look over here, mm -hmm. we have some reed and some stone and some wood. The stone's hard to see because we have a black table. So one reed, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine building material left over here. So looking at the storage building, if we had all those left over at the end of the game, then we do nine times a half. So you, you would get four and a half victory points from the storage building if you had nine pieces of building material left over at the end of the game. And with this particular building, um, this actually gives you victory points that can be half points as well. Right. So, and also, as you can see, there are no, there is no animal storage whatsoever in this building. So basically you might buy this relatively cheap building towards the end of the game. If you know you have many resources that you can capitalize on at the end of the game and you don't necessarily need it for space for animals. Right. Okay. So that was the storage building. Mm -hmm. Then here's the half timbered house. This one also, like the stables, it has to replace something. In this case, it has to replace your cottage. So getting a half-timbered house, it's basically getting like a better version of the cottage you had before. Mm -hmm. And so in order to get a half-timbered house, you would pay three wood, two stone, and one reed. And then you can see the symbol on the far right there that's showing that it replaces your cottage. Like so. So we take this. There's my cottage. After paying those materials, then I would cover that up. So then the half-timbered house is worth five victory points, mm -hmm. and it can house two animals instead of the one animal that the cottage could house. So it just you have a bigger yard, I guess, even though it's the same yeah. <laughs> square footage. Anyway, uh, that's a separate issue. Um, anyway, <laughs> so that's that. So that's the half-timbered house. Mm -hmm. And then there's a shelter, which you can get by paying two wood and one stone. Mm -hmm. The shelter is worth zero victory points, but it has a special note here. It says immediately plus one, and then it shows the different animal symbols. So as soon as you buy the shelter, you get to take either a horse, a pig, a cow, or a sheep from the supply and presumably put it in the shelter, but you could, I think you could put it anywhere on your anywhere board. You have space on the board, on your board. Yep. So it's kind of a trade-off there that it doesn't give you victory points to have the shelter, but it gives you an animal for free. So, for example, let's say you had one pig on your farm already in another building or inside a fenced-in area. If you bought this uh, shelter, you could grab another pig. It actually can be either one. Uh, it can be a sheep, it can be a pig, it can be a horse, it can be a cow. And uh, now that you have two pigs, now they can uh, reproduce and do a breeding phase at the end of that round. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, uh, a cheap way, semi-cheap way, to get an animal that your opponent denied you uh, by taking that animal away from you on the board. Right. Yeah, so if you still needed one of these animals and it wasn't available on the board anymore, this would be a way to get it. Okay. So, then in the bottom right-hand corner, you see the number one, which shows that the shelter can hold one animal. Yep. Okay. Then the last of the special buildings is the open stables. So this is kind of like getting the stables, but there's only one open stables available in the game. Mm -hmm. And so it also would replace a stall. And it costs three wood or three stone. So like with the stables, you either choose to use wood or stone to pay for this, but you have to do all wood or all stone. You can't do a mixture of both. And the symbol right here, it's the same as the stables, as you can see right there. Um, uh, it's the same symbol. You have to have a stall and then replace it with open stables. But if you look at both of these totals, open stables are slightly cheaper than stables. So obviously um, you're going to want to go for open stables if you want to go for stables at all because it costs fewer resources to build. Right. And then the open stables does give you fewer victory points. It gives you two, whereas the regular stables gives you four. So that's a trade-off, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then there's a special bonus for open stables. Immediately add one horse or cow. 
So this is limited compared to the one up here, because that one you have your choice among all four animals. This one you can only choose a horse or a cow. Right. And then in the bottom right corner, we see that it can hold five animals. So that was that. And so as uh, we zoom out here, you can tell these four are all the special buildings. So you have to go to the special building place on the board over here to build these four special buildings. But to build a stall, you go here. To build a stables, you go here. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that's just the important distinction. And like we said, there's a little bit of overlap here. Stables are essentially the same thing as uh, open stables are the same as stables, but with slight differences. Uh, the half timbered house is essentially the same thing as the cottage with um, differences and benefits um, and also costs involved. So those are the important things that you need to know about buildings. And also, as we said with the cottage initially, all buildings, as you can tell, they all have four walls all around them or four borders all around them. So they are technically enclosed spaces. So everything except the storage building can hold animals. And also, even the storage building, that, uh, that storage building's walls can function as borders for the purposes of enclosing different parcels of land. Right. So an, an adjacent space is considered to have that border. So for example, even though the storage building can't hold any animals, if it was placed here, then it would be contributing a wall there, uh, a wall there, a wall there, a wall there, and there if you had an expansion. So if you wanted to, you could do this when you build walls. And now that is a fully enclosed space with this building contributing this wall and this building contributing this wall. Right. Okay. So now let's get into the specifics regarding uh, buildings and walls and all that good stuff. So um, whenever you build buildings, the last thing I wanted to mention about that, they are permanent structures. They cannot be moved. Um, as opposed to animals, which can move around, change houses and whatnot, buildings, once you place them on your board, they are not moving anywhere. So you need to take into consideration what you're going to be planning on doing with your future moves because that is important for figuring out where you want those walls to be um, and yeah that sort of thing. So the only way that a building you've placed can change is if it's getting replaced with something else like a stall can become a stable but you still can't move it to a different location at that point. Right you're just improving the quality of that building. Right. All right so um, like we discussed in our previous video let's go up to the main board here. So um, you can only build borders into fences using this location here, where one wood is equivalent to one border. Or you can build stone walls over here, uh, two stone walls for free. That's what the 2x times that symbol means. And if you have uh, for every two stone, you can build an extra wall. So um, you obviously have to weigh uh, in terms of what do you want to do at any given time. So let's say you have a bunch of wood, so you can build a bunch of walls, uh, fences, using this location here. And it's overall cheaper, because if you compare to this location, that costs two stone to build a wall. But this, spo uh, this spot right here also gives you two free walls. You don't have to pay any resources whatsoever for those first two walls. So if you don't have the wood or the stone to build a wall, you still can build two walls for free. So. Um, you would have to put your worker on either of those spaces to build walls. Now, um, I mentioned briefly before, animals can only reside in buildings where animals can reside. And you can tell that by, based on that little red border right here and how many animals can stay in that spot. But animals can also reside on fenced-in areas. So uh, to have a fully fenced-in area, it has to be enclosed like so. So if you took an action to build fences and you built uh, an assortment like this, this space that is one green square can hold two animals by itself once it's enclosed. However, there are different things you can do to improve uh, the amount of animals that you can have in a space. Obviously, if you instead built this right here, then this is two enclosed spaces, but in the same area. So uh, basically what you need to know in any enclosed space, you can only have one type of animal 
in one continuous space. So even if this went all the way up to there and it enclosed three spaces, you could still only have one type of animal in this space. And since each green square can hold two animals, you can have two animals here or two animals here. And that's a grand total of four in this given area. So that's what you need to know about individual spaces. But um, let's say your farm's growing a lot. You don't have enough space and you need to fit in more animals. So uh, like I said, this would only be two here and two here. So you could have two sheep and two sheep, but you could not have two sheep and two cows, for example. So um, what you would need to do if you need more space in this area, you would take your worker, you would go to the main board. And one way of solving a space problem is by adding a feeding trough. So you get one feeding trough for free by going to this space, and you can also pay three wood for every extra feeding trough. So that's a pretty steep cost, but the powers of the feeding trough are pretty awesome. As you can see here, if you put one feeding trough oh, on the board, you can put a feeding trough anywhere there is a space. So you can put it on a building, uh, you can put it on a green space, um, and you can even uh, basically one feeding trough per space on the board. So when you put a feeding trough, the free one that I got there, um, onto this part of the board, you have to do a little bit of math here. So there can be two animals here and two animals here, uh, correct? As I said before. Mm -hmm. But now, Michelle, what does a feeding trough do? It basically doubles the number of animals you could have in a space. So right here where we have um, two spaces making up one enclosure, it doubles what you can have in the whole area. So before you could have two on this space and two on this space. Now you can actually have four on this space and four on this space. So a total of eight within that enclosure. They're basically sharing that feeding trough. Mm -hmm. Or if I just had a wall here, that would just be one enclosed space. So what would that be? So that would just double before you could have two. Now you can have four within this area, all of course of the same animal. And um, so if you had a lot of sheep, for example, which you might have in the game, uh, you might want to consider an assortment such as this. So that way um, you can fit more animals in a smaller space. Let's say I also got a second feeding trough. They always function as a multiplier of two. I can't place it in the same place as that feeding trough because that's illegal. Yeah, the but, same space. But I can put it in the adjacent space that's still in the same enclosure. How many would I have then? So this actually doubles for the entire area. So you could now have 16 in this entire thing. And it's limited to eight here and eight here specifically. Right. So yeah, you really could get a factory farm going here in terms of how many animals you have crammed into one little space. Um, <laughs> Obviously, uh, you can just keep going. If you built it out here and you put walls there and you put another feeding trough there, then that would be even bigger. So obviously, yeah. if you just follow that rationale, that's how that works. And just keep in mind, that would all be the same animal. So it's likely that you won't want to have very large enclosures because you'll want to have different animals to help you get more points. Right. So that's how feeding troughs work in little individual areas. So that's that. And feeding troughs also apply to buildings. So if you put one in the cottage, that would double it so that you could hold two animals in the cottage. Right. That's something else to keep in mind. Same for all the buildings. Mm -hmm. And let's say, for example, okay, let's do this as well. Um, let's say I had a feeding trough here. And I decided I wanted to put a building in this space. I am allowed to do that, even though there is a ex pre-existing feeding trough. I can take... Uh, whatever structure, let's see, let's say it was a shelter, for example. You can construct the shelter, pay the resources for it, and slide it underneath that feeding trough. So you can put a feeding trough on top of an existing building, or you can put a building on top of an existing feeding trough. So now this shelter, which normally holds one animal, can now hold two of the same type. Right. So that's that. And there's something else with feeding troughs where if a feeding trough is out by itself in a space, even if you don't have any walls, so it's not actually an enclosure, this will actually entice one animal to stay there and eat from it and not run away. So even if you don't have any walls uh, to speak of, that animal will stay there. Uh, so if you're really in a pinch and you need some space, one feeding trough all by itself in the open country area on your farm will feed one animal and keep it there. 
-hmm. Otherwise, as you saw in our previous video, uh, Michelle's sheep ran away because she didn't have enough resources to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was that in regards to feeding troughs. Okay. And now um, those were walls. And um, basically all feeding troughs, all buildings, all walls, they're stuck. So um, you obviously want to make sure that you budget that correctly and make sure all that works. Yeah, you won't be able to change your mind about where you place them, so you have to think about it carefully. And so obviously you're going to have an assortment of buildings on your area. Obviously I'm kind of breaking the rules here because there had to be a stall there initially, but you could have like an, uh, staples there, you have that there. Um, so you have to take into account all the different aspects of uh, using your space efficiently, using your actions wisely, so that way you optimize what you're doing and try not to waste your turn. Right. Is there anything else, is there anything else you want to add, Michelle? I think we covered it. All right. So that was everything regarding buildings, uh, walls, uh, rules regarding walls, and also um, uh, feeding troughs. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please let us know via email. Leave us a comment uh, here. And uh, if you enjoyed the content of this video and you want more regular updates from us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Board Game Tutors, or check us out on BoardGameGeek.com. Uh, our username, our username is the board game tutor is one word and yeah, we appreciate all of your feedback, all of your comments and all of your patronage. So we look forward to hearing from you soon. All right. Thanks so much for watching our video and we'll see you in the next one. Right. Bye. Bye everybody.